Happy birthday to Alexander the Great. It is July 19th. And today is the 2380th anniversary of the day Alexander was born. Now, if you are to go out on the internet and you were to Google it, you're going to probably get a date of July 20th, maybe July 21st, July 20th, 21st, maybe even in August in a few cases. So why am I specifying that those are wrong and that it is, in fact, July 19th? And furthermore, how do we know dates in the ancient world? A lot of times modern folks either assume we can be more precise than we can actually be, or they assume we can't be precise at all. Uh, and, and both of those extremes are not necessarily true. So I'm going to utilize Alexander's birthday in order to talk about historiography and do kind of a deep dive of why to trust or not trust sources. So my name is Dr. Shiana Reams, and you are listening to the YouTube channel uh, called Let's Talk Alexander the Great in Ancient Macedonia, where we delve into all things Alexander um, and the history of it. And I'm actually going to begin um, by reading you our one ancient source that gives us a date, and then we're going to uh, kind of unpack that and take a look at it. So it's in Plutarch's Life of Alexander, okay, and here's a pretty good translation by Robin Waterfield, uh, and this is from chapter 3, line 3, and I'm not going to read the whole piece of this, just, just the beginning. It says, anyway, Alexander was born during the first quarter of the month Hecatombian, that's the Athenian name, then he goes on and says, or Lo Loyus to give it its Macedonian name, on the 6th, which was the day when the temple of Artemis at Eph Ephesus was destroyed by fire. Okay, uh, And there's a little bit more details, which I'll, I'll just summarize rather than read to you in that. So let's talk about um, should we trust that, should we not trust that, and how do we understand time at all? Okay. Because all throughout history, people have divided up and understood time differently. Um, let's begin with the Greek calendar. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I just want to give you a, a, a sense. So the Greeks had um, their calendars varied by ethnic group. So the Athenian calendars, you just saw in Plutarch, he mentions the Athenian calendar by name. And then he says the, a different name for the Macedonian calendar. There was also a different name for Boeotian calendar, for the Spartan calendar, for the Rhodian calendar, etc. Why? It has to do with how these months got their names. They're usually related to a festival that's held during that month. And Yes, there is a Greek religion, but it's really Greek religions, and every single area in Greece had kind of different sets of festivals. And so what they're celebrating down in Athens is not necessarily what they're celebrating in Thebes or in Corinth or in Ephesus, for instance, or in Miletus, that these, these different cities and different areas have different festivals. Um, they are lunar, so they are uh, their years uh, run for about 354 days when they're using a lunar calendar. That's a problem, isn't it? Because that is not a solar calendar. And what that created for them was the need for an intercalated month. Okay. Like a, we have a leap year where we add an extra day into February in order to make it line up because the actual solar year is 364 and a quarter. <laughs> um, or 365, I can't even do my own years, much less the Greek ones. Uh, so they had to add it. They had to, to add in this ebolimos, or this leap month, in order to make it line up. And they divide their months um, into 30 days, okay? So you have uh, 10 going up, 11, then to 20, and then they go backwards. So then they go from 10 to 1 in terms of their dating, Furthermore, they begin their year at midsummer, not midwinter. Midwinter's the Roman thing. A lot of our traditions are coming out of Romans. So they don't have weeks, okay? They have those decades, those 10 days, uh, dividing up their months. Um, their months begin with the new moon, okay? So as the moon begins and then waxes and then wanes, that's how they understood months. 
Um, also, last, their days began at sunset. They get this from the ancient Near East. Uh, so if you happen to have any Jewish friends and they start Sabbath uh, at sunset on Friday, that's why, because that's the way the ancient world uh, divided up days. And they divided them up equally. So you had 12 hours in a night and you had 12 hours in a day. Uh, and these were equal for all of those uh, for each day. So yes, that means that the nights had longer hours in the winter and they had longer hours in the summer. Okay. But within that, they would divide it up. So you, you start your days at sunset uh, and you go to the next sunset. So all of that is going to play into uh, dating um, when trying to put Alexander's birthday into our modern years. So last little piece of all of this has to do with birthdays themselves. Not everybody celebrates them. Not all cultures considered important. We celebrate birthdays as a borrowing from the Romans. The Greeks didn't care. <laughs> so if you were to go out and write a biography on, um, say, Pericles or Socrates or Plato, good luck even getting a birth year, never mind a birth day. So that's an additional issue. They don't keep them. They don't keep track of them. Alexander's an exception. And he's an exception because he goes on to be an important uh, leader and to interact with the ancient Near East. And in the ancient Near East, at least for kings and things, events and important things, they do want to know dates because they practiced astrology. Okay. Now, for them today, if you go to the astronomy department and you ask them about astrology, they'll laugh you out the door. But in antiquity, astrology was a respectable techne or science. It, it, it involved a lot of math, uh, and people who were mathematike, math, mathematicians, often also did astronomy and, and astrology, uh, particularly later once it begins to flow east. Um, so uh, Western astrology, as, as uh, folks practice it today in Europe, comes out of um, the ancient Near East. Because Alexander is spending a lot of time running around in the ancient Near East, they care about dates. Okay. So we have his birthday from Plutarch, okay. and Plutarch is living under the Romans, so birthdays matter a little bit more. He's a Greek, but by the time the Romans are extending, they're, they kind of Romanize a lot of, of stuff that had once been uh, under kind of Greek fashion. So, in the ancient Near East, they would have wanted to cast charts for Alexander's birthday. We have another document called the Babylonian Chronicle, which gives us some important information about Alexander's career. Uh, quite aside from our uh, five big historians, and, and I think I mentioned it in passing in uh, one of the uh, videos on sources. But this Babylonian chronicle is important in that it gives us things like the, the date for the Battle of Galgamela and also the lunar eclipse that occurred before that uh, because they cared. They're keeping track of that. It also gives us Alexander's death date, which is different. Okay, So the death date you'll often see again is June 10th. Babylonian chronicle says he died on June 11th. Now, Given their interest in that, I'm going to go with the Babylonian Chronicles, probably June 11th, not June 10th. Um, and that's because the Greeks are fairly imprecise when it comes to dates. It, it's kind of like a, you, shooting a sawed-off shotgun at the side of a barn. Um, you're going to get something in the neighborhood, but it's not going to be very particular. The problem is the Babylonian Chronicle does not give us a birth date for Alexander. But because of that interest in his time spent in the ancient Near East, it is quite likely that his birthday would have been recorded somewhere so Plutarch might know. Now, let's then delve into, do we trust the date he gives us? Okay, So we've got a date, can we believe it? So why or why not? So I'm going to give you, give you the pros and the cons. First of all, I'm going to give you the cons. And that is, it's a little too precious. Alexander happens to be born on the date that this super important temple in Asia Minor burns to the ground. 
And in the piece from Plutarch, I didn't read that goes on a little bit after that. And, and again, it's Plutarch, Life of Alexander, chapter three, line three. Uh, it says that the reason that they're explaining this is that Artemis let her temple be burned because she wasn't there. She was off overseeing the birth of this very important person. Um, charming. Okay. Another little piece there says that the uh, Magi, the, this is a priestly cast um, connected with Zoroastrianism, um, that they are running around seeing this as a terrible omen, and they say, you know, something something uh, that is dire, uh, somebody has been born today that, that will be the uh, destruction of Asia, like the burning of the temple. Um, so you could say, well, we really don't know when he was born, so probably sometime around that time, and people just conveniently made it on the day that the temple burned. Um, entirely possible, all right? I'm going to throw at you another possibility, however, and that's that the date is correct because it happened to be the day the temple burned. And this has to do with how people remember things, okay? And it's why I'm a little, I, 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 I would not bet my next paycheck that that birthday is correct. But I'm also not going to completely count it out. And the reason has to do with how we, as human beings, have, exercise recall. Um, we need aids to help us remember. And so it could very well be that somebody later remembered Alexander's birthday because it happened to coincide with the burning of the temple, right? Uh, and then later people make these cute little uh, explanations for what's going on. Now, they, obviously on the day he was born, they would not have known that was the day that the temple burned because they don't have things like cell phones and, and instant communication. It would have been probably months later that, that that news would have reached Macedonia, but somebody might have remembered it. It's not unlike um, how my father in particular, and, and I used to remember the date my mother died. And that was August the 30th of 1997. Now, if you happen to be a royal watcher, you also know that is the same day, uh, day that um, uh, Princess Diana died. And I remember sitting in the hospital uh, watching the news of the car crash in France uh, and all of this stuff. And then she died very early that morning uh, of the 30th. And my mother died later that afternoon. Um, so it, it was kind of a memory aid. And, and later my father used to say, two princesses died on that day. Okay. Uh, kind of like Artemis let her temple burn because she was off giving, you know, helping Alexander come into the world. Uh, so this is how people remember. So I'm not going to say automatically that this is incorrect. So I, I think it's possible that it is the 6th. So all right. So let's say that we're going to go ahead and trust the 6th of Loyos. Um, how do we get from that date to the modern day? All right. And that goes back to understanding how the Greeks cut up time. So they are counting their months starting from the new moon. So you need to know when the new moon is. Ernst Badian. Yes, that Ernst Spadian, okay, author of 250-something articles on all sorts of things in the ancient world. Ernst Spadian, one time, and he taught at Harvard, he walked over to the Harvard Astronomy Department, and he, he decided, I'm going to settle this. And he asked the guys, he said, can you tell me when the new moon was in July of 356 BCE? So they did their little math calculations, and they said, yeah, they, they gave him the date, and then he counted forward, and that was July 19th, not the 20th or the 21st. Most often, yes, it falls on the 20th, but not in the year 356. In the year 356, the 6th of Luz would have fallen on July 19th. So that is Alexander's correct birthday. But, but maybe not. There's one more complication. And that is when the Greeks start the day. It's different from when we start the day. They start the day, remember, at sunset. So the 6th of Lous started at sunset on July 18th. So if he was a night baby and he was born before midnight, then he was born on July 18th, okay, not the 19th. But at least we could say it wasn't the 20th and it wasn't the 21st. On that particular year, it was 
July 18th to July 19th, somewhere in that. So that's Alexander's birthday. So you, uh, if, if you're headed out tonight or something, you know, raise a cup uh, of nice red wine uh, to Alexander and wish him happy birthday.